Hello everyone. Welcome to session one of My Percussion World. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. All right. This is the tambourine. I'm sure you guys know the name of this instrument. It's a frame, round. Sometimes it could be oblong. Um, sometimes it even could be square. You got little jingles. Um, I'm hearing that the tambourine was originated uh, in West Africa, uh, Greece, Turkey, the Middle East. Uh, you hear me play the tambourine on the quarter notes. Uh, you'll hear me sometimes shaking. And you'll hear me make a roll out. Of course, this one is made out of wood. This tambourine is a synthetic production of the wooden tambourine, and it sounds different. This particular one is stainless steel, but they also are made of brass, which gives it a total different sound. A lot more darker, richer. But the stainless, for me, cuts through. Okay, my next instrument here that I love playing is uh, called the uh, Fushi Kabasa. It's um, made out of wood and uh, a little strip of metal that goes around and then on above that are these little ball bearings with a handle and I use this song um, on um, Mercy um, and I play it in a triplet form a three form where it's like You can also shake it single kabasa afushi along with in the same family this is a synthetic kabasa afushi it's made out of plastic obviously um, same format, so to speak. It has little grooves along the outer edge of the gourd with the beads. And you can see the difference. And this is played, this kabasa fushi is played the same way. I can shake it. Again, this is the synthetic. And this is the larger shakery, which is almost is made as a synthetic body shell with beads all around. And you can play it along the same way. And I'm gripping it. Or I can shake it. And for added sound or um, definition, I can shake a re or shake a ray, kibasa, 
of Fouché's. Came up. The other set of toys that I like to play with are instruments. Uh, I like to play are these um, shakers, which is metal, synthetic. Um, you know, you can have shakers, the beads are inside the shakers, which create different tones depending on what you're using inside. A lot of people, a lot of manufacturers use sand, rocks, rice, beads, and of course, with whatever you put inside the cylinders here, that's gonna create your sound. And the shakers. And this one, as you can tell, is a three tubes um, all connected together with your strip of metal here. And um, this shaker, this particular shaker, is synthetic also, uh, but it disassembles and you can use it. Again, it all depends on what is inside the individual cylinders that creates the sound and the more you shake it, louder they are. Another instrument that I enjoy uh, putting my hands on are these goat toes that are connected via um, a strip of um, material and are stringed together. I believe uh, this, some of the goat toes that I've heard uh, originated from South America, Bolivia. When these, uh, some of the earlier instruments were created, you used them to survive uh, or you used uh, parts of the animal to entertain yourself. In this particular case, it probably was a goat. I've seen um, hooves of cattle used and of course, you know, that you just use them in the uh, shake. Or you can rattle. Goat toes. My next instrument are the ankle bell bracelets from India, where a lot of the um, dancers, male and female, use these on their ankles. So some of them put them on their wrists. I tied them together with a, a bass string, um, and I use it as a shake. instruments in any way you may desire because they all make beautiful individual sounds. The ever popular sleigh bells. Um, a lot of the instruments that I use um, is for color, for textures, sound effects. My favorite time is to use these puppies as jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. All uh, man-made, stapled together, a sound effect. Chimes. I think everyone should have chimes in their yards, bedroom and in my particular case, on stage. It creates such a soothing when they're at this volume.
This particular instrument is um, very loud, can be. It's called a flexitone, and it's a sheet of metal with two beaters, and you control it with your thumb, and you maneuver it with the shake of the wrist, and I'll put it sideways here. And the less pressure you put on the metal strip, the lower. The note is, the more pressure you put, the higher the pitch. A flexitone. Another one of my favorite instruments is the Vibraslap. This instrument is a little bit more complicated in that this particular one is made out of wood. Originally, it was made out of a, a natural, I mean, an, an animal, the jawbone um, of the animal. And the sound that it produces is when you um, hit this part of the instrument, the ball of it, and it creates a sound, but I want to show you, if I can, what produces the sound. Um, and what it is, is there is a bar with little um, pellets, we'll say, attached to the bar that's inside of the cylinder here. And it's all connected with this metal rod and you strike the ball right here and the little rivets hit the piece of wood and it creates a sound and you can manipulate the, the sound by holding on to this little makeshift handle And I'll see if I can show you here real quick the vibration of the rivets that are in here. And of course, the less pressure you have on the handle, the louder the sound is. the vibra slap. Next instrument is the ribbon crasher made out of metal, four bars. Um, uh, you might hear me play this on Love Tractor, one of my favorite songs. And uh, the, what sound it creates is through me striking it with a drumstick. This isn't a drumstick, it's just a beater that I use in this particular case. But it creates the sound of um, clapping in an artificial way. The Ribbon Crasher. Another instrument that's a favorite of mine is the stirring drum. S-T-I-R-R-I-N-G, drum. And you play it by actually, by actually stirring it. And um, it's wood, has different sizes of wood with a beater in the middle. If you can see that little beater, and it makes 
the beautiful sound by stirring. The steering drum. My next instrument here is the guiro, G-U-I-R-O, from Cuba. As you can see, there are ridges in the body of the instrument, which is made out of wood. And um, again, you know, it's originally a Cuban instrument and um, it keeps rhythms. You strike it with a piece of wood and uh, just basically you go up and down. Some people say it sounds like a frog when you go single stroke. And the less pressure you put on your hands or your fingers is how the pitch is regulated. And when I use a tighter grip, the pitch will be higher. The guiro. Another instrument of mine that I love using is the cricket. And uh, it produces a sound that's supposed to imitate a cricket. metal with an opening and it has little ball bearings on the inside of the piece of wood and that's what makes it sound um, earthy um, and less metallic sound. Hopefully you can see the bearings hit the piece of metal, which creates the, the cricket sound. Cricket. This instrument is called a ching chalk. Um, a cylinder made out of wood with beaters on either side, with the opening uh, at the edges. Another sound effect. the ching chong. This drum is called a pandero. It's a Brazilian drum. Uh, you might hear it during carnival. Um, most of the time uh, it's played uh, with the stick. Uh, and you regulate the pitch. As you can see, it has tuning lugs all the way around it. Um, and you manipulate the pitch by putting pressure on the inside of the drum um, and you that's the normal sound without pressure but we can do this The pandero, the claves. Um, they say the claves are the key and the key 
are the claves. Claves are a very important instrument in the Afro-Cuban world music um, in that the most drummers use the claves as their um, instrument that they listen to the most for accents. Um, and uh, claves are made out of different types of wood. This particular wood is rosewood. Um, and uh, they're made out of all sorts of uh, wood. And each wood, believe it or not, has a different tone. And you can also And the proper way of playing the claves is to have a little bit of gap uh, from the lower part of the clave onto your fingertips so that there is a, a gap in between the claves and the palm of your hand. Uh, and you strike it. And you don't have to hold it very tight because in any instrument, especially wood, the tighter you hold the wood, the lower the pitch, the less grip you have on the instrument of wood in this particular case. The clave, the triangle, it is a very subtle instrument made out of metal and you strike it with the beater uh, triangles come in different sizes. Uh, they can come as uh, big as a foot and as small as uh, an inch and a half. And obviously, the more bigger the triangle is, the depending on where you strike the triangle, uh, it'll give you a different sound each and every time. Uh, different, like I said, depending on where you strike the triangle will give you a totally different sound. Um, a lot of times my triangles on stage are mounted uh, with a uh, piece of fishing line because a lot of times I don't have uh, enough time to grab the triangle and create the sound that I need to create. Um, you strike, like I said, with the beater. Or. The triangle. Bell tree. Um, Pretty simple, you know, I use the bell tree uh, in the driving song um, at the very intro and uh, very simple to, uh, to use, again, with a beater. Um, and sometimes I can use it as individual um, notes, perhaps. The bell tree. This particular instrument is very unique. Um, I don't use it on stage like I used to uh, many years ago, um, but um, it's a multi-purpose instrument is how I um, can define it. And um, it's made out of metal. Um, and uh, I remember, um, to me, uh, it, these instruments like this one, particular one, um, again, I don't use as much. I kind of like to keep it 
for special occasions as this is. But it's, uh, I can use it as a shaker. Or I can use it as a sound effect. On both ends. And if I mute it just a little bit, I can create different sounds and different rhythms. Uh, as I said before, I have an array of instruments whose um, names I've forgotten because I've collected instruments for so many years. Um, this particular one I use as a sound effect and uh, it's a synthetic body um, and it has a double beater very loud and um, I think it's a very nice little uh, tone myself and if someone can think of the name of it please let us know finger symbols or zills as some people refer, refer to them from Turkey The sound just lingers, like the lingering lead. Finger symbols. All right, we're coming close to the end of this session, session one of my percussion world. Thank you. The slide whistle, one of my favorite toys, sound effect. A bird call that I use in Mercy. The Samba whistle, which has three different tones. Siren whistle. And this is my talking drum, which I'm sure you've heard me play on rock. And uh, it's manipulated by the wire strings. Sometimes it's a wire with a, uh, an hourglass drum shell, drum heads on both ends of the drum and you create the sound by striking the drum and I usually like to use both hands my lower hand uh, is used to mute the head of the drum that I the head of the drum that I strike with a mallet and I squeeze it that's why a lot of people call it the squeeze drum along with or the talking drum. drum. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly had a great time showing you all my toys. Uh, I'd like to thank our staff, our road crew, our techs, 
I'd like to thank our staff here in Athens. A special shout out to Zoll Byron and Big Daddy Matt DeCamp for being here and helping me out. See ya, love your neighbor, go out and ride a bike. Thank you.